How to reconcile these facts. The coastlines of the continents match up as if they should fit together. The geology of the continents contain perfect matches, such as the east coast of South America and west coast of Africa. Fossils show that the same plants and animals lived on land masses that are now too separate to travel between. Fossils show plants and animals living on land which is now too cold for them. Discuss. One theory proposed to explain this is known as continental drift. It was first presented by German scientist Alfred Wegener in 1912. He theorized that all of the continents were once connected in one large landmass, and that the land then drifted apart, forming the continents we see today. Scientists in the 1960s developed the theory of plate tectonics. This theory states that the Earth's surface is broken into large, rigid pieces called plates that move independently of each other. The plates consist of the upper mantle and crust, the lithosphere. They would float on the lower mantle. Although the plates are in constant motion, they move very slowly, about 3 to 5 centimeters per year. There are three types of boundaries between plates or three ways that plates move with respect to each other. Divergent, where the plates spread apart. Convergent, where the plates push together. And transform, where the plates slide past each other. Seafloor spreading is a result of divergent boundaries. As the plates separate, magma from below the surface emerges, flows onto the seafloor, and cools. This pushes the older oceanic crust away. New oceanic crust forms along the mid-ocean ridge, and older oceanic crust moves away from the ridge. Magma pushes up through the rift in the center of the mid-ocean ridges. As the magma cools and hardens, it retains traces of the Earth's magnetic field at that time. The Earth's magnetic field has reversed polarity numerous times, as indicated by seafloor crust. The similar bands on either side of the center ridge are evidence for seafloor spreading. Remember that oceanic crust is thinner and denser than continental crust. Looking at these diagrams, what are some things you notice? As you can see in the pictures on the previous slide, oftentimes when two plates converge, one tectonic plate moves under another. This process is known as subduction. Subduction happens when one of the plates involved is oceanic crust. Since this type of crust is denser, it sinks down into the mantle. As the oceanic crust sinks, it warms in the mantle and melts. Its density decreases and the melted material can rise to the surface as magma and form volcanoes. Subduction can occur when two pieces of oceanic crust that are both dense and both sink form a very deep trench. Subduction zones are also associated with earthquakes. There's a lot of friction as the plates are dragged past each other and the rubbing of the plates can cause the earth to shake. Subduction occurs along the edges of the plates surrounding the Pacific Ocean. This results in an area called the Ring of Fire because of all the volcanoes and earthquakes. A volcano is any spot on the Earth's surface where magma can flow out. Remember, magma is molten rock that is below the surface of the Earth. When magma gets to the surface, it is then referred to as lava. There are three main types of volcanoes described on the next page. A fourth place where volcanism occurs would be at the spreading center of a mid-ocean ridge. Hawaii is a special type of volcano called a hotspot. Most volcanism is associated with plate boundaries. Hawaii is unusual because it is an active volcano in the middle of a plate. Shield volcanoes are the largest volcanoes. They generally have slow eruptions of lava that cools, hardens, and builds up the volcano over time. They are gently sloping. Cinder cone volcanoes erupt very explosively because of gases trapped in the magma. They eject volcanic debris like ash and solidified lava. They are not very large because the explosion often destroys the volcano. Composite volcanoes, also called stratovolcanoes, 
will eject both lava and debris. They tend to form tall peaks because of the alternating layers of lava and debris. When two pieces of continental crust collide, it is difficult for one to slide down underneath the other because they are both very thick. The pieces of continental crust bulge upward, forming mountains. Converging continental plates are associated with earthquakes, like subduction zones. Intense pressure from the motions of the plates can cause deformation in the rock layers. Folding occurs when rock layers bend from compression forces. Folding is a slow process and can take millions of years. The rock layers are pushed inward and are being compressed. Faulting occurs when rock layers fracture and there's motion along the fracture. The surface along which the motion occurs is called the fault plane. Faults can occur at many different angles from fully lateral, which is left-right, motion, to fully vertical, or up and down motion. In general, faulting can be associated with most other geologic processes, like subduction, volcanoes, mountain building, and folding. Subduction zones, volcanoes, mountain building, and faulting can all be associated with earthquakes. An earthquake occurs when pieces of the crust are under pressure and then suddenly slip past each other. The slipping motion occurs along a fault plane. The point underground where the motion begins is called the focus, or hypocenter. The projection of the hypocenter to the surface is called the epicenter. Earthquakes result in a release of energy which radiates outward as seismic waves. The seismic waves shake the earth as they move away from the focus. Seismographs are devices that can detect very small vibrations in the crust. Scientists at a minimum of three distant locations can detect the arrival of the seismic waves and together compute where the waves originated from the earthquake's focus. This process is called triangulation. Sometimes when earthquakes occur along the seafloor, it can cause a shift or ripple in the ocean water that forms a wave that spreads out from the epicenter. When the water reaches the land, it can grow to a wave hundreds of feet high, called a tsunami. Not all underwater earthquakes lead to tsunamis. In order to form a tsunami, the earthquake must be very strong and cause vertical motion of the seafloor.